Assalamu alaikum everyone again. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Ma'amun Ahram. Uh, so uh, in today's lecture, this is the second topic. We will cover a number of uh, topics. Uh, I'll give you a break uh, every once in a while, uh, but I'll continue with this lecture to the end. So um, now that we understand the basic structure of uh, DNA, and how it is a polymer composed of nucleotides connected to each other via phosphodiester bonds. Uh, now that we understand that it is a highly negatively charged molecule due to the presence of uh, phosphate groups, in uh, a phosphate group in every nucleotide, so it is full of uh, uh, negative charges because of that. So we will talk about a number of basic applications. Uh, mainly we'll talk about gel electrophoresis, we'll talk about dot blot, and we'll talk about southern blotting. At the same time, we will discuss the concepts of DNA denaturation and hybridization. So uh, you can refer to Cooper's uh, book. Um, these are the pages. Uh, but again, the main resource for you is this lecture. Okay, so let's talk about gel electrophoresis. Um, so, what does the word electrophoresis mean? So, phoresis means movement. So, it's basically movement of molecules uh, within a medium. Medium, يعني وسيط. Okay, like water, like air, like a solid molecule, and so on. Electro means electrical. So basically, electrophoresis means movement of a molecule through a medium as a result of the presence of an electrical current. And the medium in this case is a gel. Gel, just like gelo, the gelo that uh, we love to eat. And this gel is made of a sugar material known as agarose. So that's the, the, uh, the gel, that's what it's made of. So agarose is a sugar molecule. Uh, this is the structure of the sugar molecule. And it is a polymer. Remember how I uh, define polymer? So a polymer is a molecule that is made of repetitive units of monomers, of basic structures. So this is the monomer right here. You don't have to know the names, okay? So basically, this polymer uh, forms a structure that looks like this. This is an electron microscopic image. So this is like zoom like millions of times. This is how it looks like. So it's a network of, uh, a network of sugars connected to each other you can see that there are pores. Pores means openings, okay, within this um, gel. So the idea here is that if you have a gel, like a jello again, and you uh, add a drop of water and you come after like a few minutes, you would find that this drop of water has disappeared. Basically what happened to this water is that it goes through the pores. Well, same thing if you insert or if you add a molecule on top of this agarose or of this molecule or a network, the molecule would go through the, um, the gel. Now, the smaller the molecule, the easier it is to get inside the gel. Okay? So, the way by which we can move molecules, that is DNA, through the gel is via electric current. Remember that DNA is negatively charged. So the idea here is that we create a gel that looks like this in red, okay? And it is inserted or it is placed, I'm sorry, inside a tank that looks like a container that looks like this. And the gel is uh, formed in a way whereby there is something known as a well. A well, yani beer, all right? 
So you have a well, and in fact, if you look at this um, image to the right, there are multiple wells that are formed or that we form within this agarose gel. So inside these wells, we can place uh, we can place DNA molecules, or we can place our samples. That is. So we add our samples. This is how it looks like. This is the gel inside the tank, and we uh, insert, we pipette in, or we place our samples inside these wells. So we have, uh, if you look again to the right, you have in well number one, sample one, and you have in well number three, sample two, and these are empty wells. There, there are no samples in here, okay? So we place them in a tank, as I said, a container, and we add a buffer, we add a solution, a special solution, and we apply electricity. And the idea here is that the DNA, if you look again, let's, let's go back, so if you look again to the right, when we um, turn on the electrical current, the DNA would move through the gel. Okay? Now, notice that the smaller molecule moves faster than the larger molecules. Okay? And that's how DNA fragments or DNA strands or DNA molecules are separated. This is known as gel electrophoresis. Now, I want you to pay attention to a very, very important point, And that is, we cannot see a single DNA molecule unless we have electron microscopy. And we do not use electron microscopy. So, every DNA sample, in fact, we have millions or thousands or to millions of DNA mo molecules of the same type, the same size. So, when we place them inside a well, they migrate together since they have the exact same size, regardless of the type regardless of the sequence of the DNA fragments or strands. As long as they have the same, same size, they migrate, they move through the gel together. Okay? And when they do, they actually, so this is another view, if you look at the red gel right here, we place our sample in here again. We apply an electrical current and the DNA fragments would move through the gel. Okay, and then we take this gel and we color the DNA molecules. We color them or we stain them. Okay, so the DNA molecules would look like bands, sharita, just like you see in here. So each band in here represents thousands to millions of DNA molecules of the same size. And notice that you have bands placed at different positions. This is because they have different sizes. So the upper band, so basically when we look at a gel, we look at it uh, whereby the wells are on top, as you see in here, and the DNA moves downward. Okay, that's how we look at a gel. So remember, remember that because in, in future images and pictures of gels, uh, they would be they will be represented this way that is you have the the larger fragments on top and the smaller fragments to the bottom okay so each band represents thousands to millions of DNA molecules of the same size now the DNA is stained because we cannot see DNA the reason why we cannot see DNA is because it absorbs light at UV in the UV range and that's why we cannot see it but if we color DNA then we would be able to see it now and it is stained in different types of dyes including uh, the famous dye that we use is known as ethidium bromide except that we don't use it anymore because it's carcinogenic that is it causes cancer okay so that's the idea of a gel. Now, if you look at a gel right here, we have three wells. One, two, three. Okay? 
Lane number one, we placed what is known as a size standard, meaning that this is a DNA sample that contains multiple fragments of known sizes. So the sizes of the DNA molecules are thousand base pairs. Remember DNA is double stranded. So for every, um, for every strand, there is a complementary strand to it. And it, this means that if I, if I say 1000 base pair, it means that this is a DNA molecule that is made of 2000 bases, 1000 bases per strand. Okay, so we have a thousand base pair strand, we have an 850 base pair strand, 750 base pair, 600 base pair, 200 base pair and 100 base pair band. So each band represents again thousands to millions of DNA molecules of the same size. Now, then in lane number two, we have sample one. In lane number three, we have sample number two. Notice that in sample number two, I have one, two, three bands. And I can estimate the sizes of the bands because I have in lane number one, the size standard. So sample number one contains DNA fragments of 1000 base pair size and another, um, an, another um, DNA or uh, DNA type of 850 and I have another one that is almost about, well you can estimate what the size is, it's about 500, sorry, uh, 450 to 500 base pair, uh, base pair. Now, if you look at sample number two, it also has three DNA fragments. Notice that the sizes are different, so this is a different sample. So sample number two contains a DNA band or a band that is, of, that is about a size of a thousand base pair. Okay. Now, it could be the same as the one that exists in sample number one, or it could be different. And there are two other DNA uh, fragments. One has a size of about 750 and the other one has a size of, well, we can estimate what the size is. It's about 650 to 700. Okay, to, to, so this is gel electrophoresis. Now, let's watch this video together. Uh, it's different than the link that I have in here, but I urge you to, to look, uh, to watch the animation video in this um, link. So open this link and please watch it. So uh, let's go and watch this uh, animation video. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'm gonna um, uh, let it um, uh, speak and um, I'll stop it at uh, certain positions to explain a few things. So let's start. So this is the agarose gel right here. This is how uh, it would look like. We place it in a tank and inside the tank we have a solution and so I'm gonna leave this for you. We place our samples in the wells as you can see here. So we have four different samples. Okay, and the agarose is made of, uh, sorry, and remember that the, that DNA is made of, it's a polymer of, um, of nucleotides, and these nucleotides have phosphate groups that are negatively charged. Okay, so let's turn on the power supply. Okay, now the DNA sample would migrate through the gel. Okay, now watch how large molecules move uh, slower than smaller DNA molecules or fragments. Now the, uh, the purple color you see in here is basically a tracking dye. So it is a dye that allows us to see um, how far the sample has migrated through the gel. So we can stop it without, DNA, without having the DNA uh, falling out or getting out of the shell at the end. Okay, so, okay. So the DNA migrates according to size again, and we take the gel and we stain the DNA. Okay, 
So under UV light, we can see this DNA. Notice how we have uh, different samples. This is the size standard. I know what the sizes of the fragments are. Uh, in sample number um, one, we have two uh, fragments, two bands representing, again, each band uh, contains thousands to millions of DNA molecules of the same size. Um, and this sample contains a, a large DNA fragments and smaller DNA fragments compared to the first sample. And this sample contains three DNA fragments. Okay. Then we take a picture and that's how it looks. So basically, um, now, there, there is a concept that I want you to know, or let's say two terms that I want you to know. When we have DNA, in order for us to see DNA, there are two basic ways or methods. One is DNA staining, which is basically a molecule like ethidium bromide that gets inside or between the bases and it gives us and it it gives dna a color so it colors dna this is known as dna staining or coloring the other term that i want you to know is dna labeling which is basically the dna is not colored but what we do is that we attach sorry we attach a fluorescent tag something that gives fluorescence, a chemical that gives fluorescence, or we label DNA with radioactive phosphorus. So the whole, so phosphorus now emits radioactivity and we can detect this radioactivity. Or we can detect DNA, we can see DNA uh, with the fluorescent tag. Now the DNA fluoresces. So it's almost like if you, you have a car and this car has the headlights, right? Now, when we see a headlight, we know that a car is coming, but we really, at night, we do not see the whole car because it's dark, but we see the headlights. So we know that there is a...